So hello friends, so we have the, read the poem, you enjoyed it, I suppose the text is with you, now we have got a series of questions, uh, 15 plus if you want you can uh, any number of questions for, for the time being, for the understanding of this poem, I think these 15 questions will do. First question is that what was, what picture of the sea holder do you get from the poem? What picture of the sea holder do you get? You get poet's mother, 12 years old, her two cousins, Betty and Dolly. They were holding her hands. They were bare, they were paddling. Paddling means walking barefoot uh, along the seashore, shallow water of the seashore. And also they found uh, that immediately uh, from somewhere the uncle came with the uh, with the with camera and he took a snapshot. So this was one of the uh, favorite hobbies we can say or past names of the poet's mother. So this is the picture that we get, isn't it? Second question, how do you know it was a casual photograph? We know that it is a casual photograph because they were not prepared now. See, as you can see, the hair, they were smiling through, the, through their hair. That means the hair of these girls were strewn across her, strewn. S T R E W and strewn across her face, maybe because tossed by the beach wind or the beach uh, mixed with water, wind and water, something. So probably they were wet, partially wet, and so strewn across her face and uh, their face, and so that night, as I told you, tossed by the wind. So they were uh, smiling through the through their hair. So we know that it is uh, casual. Because there are no, no preparation or no makeup. They did not have any time to go to a beauty parlor and get themselves uh, rouge and other things like that on you know, their face. So it's, it's a cash. From somewhere, the uncle was not there with them. With them. The uncle had not accompanied them. So from there, we know it is a cash photograph. All right. So the third question is that eh? is there any significance for the use of the indefinite article A in the title? Yes, there is, a, there is significance because as I already told you in the last class that, uh, that the A means indefinite. So that means there are more pictures. And he said that I saw a boy, that means there are many other boys. <laughs> or if I say the boy, that means that particular boy. So this is not particularizing, there were many and probably it is taken from an album. That's why it's a A photograph, not a the photograph. If it is, like that, there are many photographs of such picnics, such beach holidays, and so on. So that is, it has got the, uh, that significance. This I mean, that means this is not the only photograph. That's the thing. Okay. And fourth question is, how do you know that the snapshot was very dear to her mother? Because after many years, she took it, and she used to go through this very really often. And in this case, about the, you can see, you can see the. Some 20, 30 years later, line 10 onwards you can read. So later, she would laugh at the snapshot, and then she would say there is a dialogue within the poem, and that that in fact it uh, what does it what is the function of the dialogue? It makes lively and dramatic. So let's see Betty and Ruli how they are dressed up and so on. So we find that it is a favorite of how do you know that the snapshot was very dear to her? She used to. So it's not once or twice, but throughout maybe every week or every month she used to go through this photograph and enjoy. All right. And then five, what qualities of her mother does the narrator cherish? Uh, the narrator cherishes the qualities of her mother, especially her laughter, her sweet face. See that? Her friendly manners, uh, very friendly manners. No? And uh, her love for the cousins and also her, her daughter, naturally. That is there. So these are the qualities. And also, she she also enjoyed her favorite pastime, or that is going for beach holidays. Probably she might have accompanied her many times after she was born. So sweet face and also her laughter main boy. And then sixth one. How do you know her mother? Uh, her mother appreciated the snapshot. Because as we have already said, that is a repetition of the, uh, the answer of another question. That is, she, after after 20, so, so 20, 30 years later, 
अशी क्योंकि अंदर श्रीवंत होता है श्री अपरिशित होता है अंदर श्री युष्ट से होता है लुक बेटी अंदर होली हाउ एंग दे वेर हाउ दे वेर ड्रेस्ड फॉर 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 द होली एंड सॉन्ग बीच होली सो फ्रॉम देर यू नो दैट पार्ट सिक्स टू सेवन एक्सप्लेन लेबर्डीज लेबर्ड मीस विथ ग्रेट डिफिकल्टी यू डू समथिंग विथ ग्रेट डिफिकल्टी is just the opposite and now as as we have already seen in this the figure of speech called oxymoron y x y y m o r y n oxymoron means like two opposites you now see for example we say uh, hot ice cream that is oxymoron or regular irregular <laughs> that is uh, oxymoron so opposites are placed together but it has got a meaning so here labored is means uh, this with great difficulty uh it was difficult for her to take or feel uh, that sense of easiness that is mean very difficult for her labor is you know with the labor is of loss that's the thing so uh, to me right uh, as we can see it is it is a loss so it is to forget that loss is very difficult But at the same day, once you somehow manage to forget, you feel a kind of catharsis or a kind of easiness. So that is liberation. With great difficulty, you come to a position where you feel that you are at ease with yourself. That's the thing. With great difficulty. So that's the meaning of liberation. Seven. Ah, sorry. Eight. What is meant by this? This circumstance. Oh, this circumstance means, as we can see now, line seventy, we find that as that girl lived and of this circumstance, this circumstance means that is the loss, the loss of my mother, the loss of uh, the her. I can I can no more see her sweet face. I can no more see uh, see her. La seems I I can no more enjoy her laughter. I can no more enjoy uh, this her company. And also, as we have seen, calculated, she must have died between say forty five and fifty. So that is an untimely death. So these circumstances, all this, that is the disappearance of uh, her laughter, then sweet face, sweet smile, her company. and then her past time and uh, all those relationship you know that uh, family relationship a uh, mother a uh, motherly care all these things lost and this circumstances that's mean the whole story the whole story of the uh, poem you can say this circumstances the the entire thing whatever is whatever is described here whatever is uh, explained here this circumstances And also, also as we said, untimely death. No, for most probably it must be 45. Others, the other engineer surely told her died 90 plus, but uh, her mother probably for some accident or maybe we do not know any of that is this circumstances. All that has been said in the poem that is the this circumstances. Then it silence silences who silence. So that's very interesting. It's It means whose? It silence. That means the circumstances. It the end of this circumstance. There is nothing to say at all. It silence. The circum the silence of the circumstances. That's the thing. The silence of the circumstances silences me. So what is silence of the circumstances? We cannot see anything. We have no control over these things. That is the silence. See, everything has come to an end. That when you enter a cemetery, the silence. That silence will silence everything else in this world. Once you meditate on that, it's the most beautiful line as I told you in this poem, and the most meditative words. See, the circumstances. It's silence. When everything has now come to an end. Understand? Everything has come to an end, so there is silence, and they are that silence. Silence, silences, silences. Whom? Me, me. 
and probably my relatives and friends. So I cannot say anything. We have to resign ourselves to faith. That is a great stoic philosophy. Silence. What can I do? I can do nothing. All I can do is cherish the memories, the memories of my mother, going to beach holidays, her sweet face, her laughter, and the way how jovial she was. She used to call others and show this photograph. All those things now, silence. Circumstances. These are the circumstances. And now it's means it's that is directly related to circumstances. It's circumstances. It's silence. Silence. We have to accept. We have to resign the faith. No question can be asked. Why my mother died? Why she met with an untimely death? What happened to her after that? That's one it's a question that we cannot do. So it's silence. Silences. All right. How do you explain? There is nothing to say. There is nothing to say. Means we are humans. Faith will or go. Man proposes, God disposes. What can we say? You cannot say. Anything. There is nothing to say. Mean we are helpless. That's the thing. We are helpless. With all this advancement in science and other things like that. When it is time, you have to go. There is no way out. Helpless. Bring out, out, out brief candle. Life said tale told many days, full of sound and beauty, signifying nothing. So that is what can be done. Nothing can be done. So that is the meaning. Helplessness. There is nothing to say? Yeah, helpless. What are the poetic devices used here? Well, my dear friends, it's very interesting. It is, uh, it is not, the poem does not fit into any form. For example, not a, well, not a sonnet. It's not a sonnet. It is not a lyric. It is not, uh, otherwise a short poem, so you can see. See, uh, not a poem, not a sonnet, not a lyric. You don't find any, uh, the 19 line points, what name we can give, etc. We have no idea. You can say this is um, a poem that expresses nostalgia. That we can express no. And poetic devices, cardboard, that is a starting, it is metonymy. Metonymy means you give another name to something. For example, instead of photograph, you say cardboard. Not metaphor, metaphor is something else. So, here are a closely related object. You are using a word which is closely related to the object that is in your mind. So what is in your mind is a photograph. <laughs> and then he says cardboard. So it is metonymy, pure speech metonymy. Then you find the only I told you oxymoron. Labor is oxymoron. There are alliterations you will find. So silence, silences. Repetition of consonants. Say S S like that. So that is silence. And then you have got the uh, to make the poem very dramatic. You can say there is dialogue in such. See that is the line uh, you can see you might remember now. That taking the snapshot is a C Betty and Dolly. She would say, and look how they dressed us for the beach holiday. So for the beach, for the beach, means beach world. So there is a dialogue. Dialogue, of course, wherever you use dialogue, it becomes more lively. And then you have uh, another is that it is uh, transient feet. Transient feet actually is considered as a, a transferred epithet. Epithet means uh, an adjective. Here the transfer, the, actually it should be used with life not with the feet. So in that way you can consider that it is a transfer epithet. So you have a metonymy, you have oxymoron, you have alliteration, you have uh, oxymoron is labored loss, and uh, you have a, a transfer epithet. So epithet. So these are the poetic devices you can say used. It is not a, it's not a poem that is rhyming. And, uh, it's all about bereavement and loss of two persons, not one. It's two persons now. 
one is hidden and the other is uh, other the other is you can say as a, the narrator the narrator is very uh, conspicuous but the other person is hidden at least so because he is remembering or memories are memories of her mother so the poem is nostalgic and it is of bereavement and bereavement and loss isn't it that is and again you can see if you would call it a poetic device there is a contrast between perennial nature and temporary human life nature is perennial lasting for a long time but transient feel terribly transient feel that is a human life there is a contrast again sir these are the uh, poetic devices by which uh, the poet has tried to defamiliarize the situation after all what is it it's nothing but somebody is taking a photograph and going through that and then remembering uh, the loss and so on simple but at the same time when it is put within this frame of nine lines like this then you are attracted to us that is beauty the choice of words choice of words means diction so all those things will attract you all right fine so what impact what are the poetic there what impact does the poem have on you well as i have already told you it has got impact like this you can think of a mother's day mother's love so every year we can have a mother's day i think certain cultures it is a must and then you can have a uh, contrast think of the contrast here you meditate you contrast you can meditate on that that is an impact then and then you find the uh, see death a uh, meditation on death is see that is uh, the silence this circumstances its silence its silence means that is death and uh, life after that of all over which we have absolutely no no comfort yes, that is and also you can see nostalgia as i already said is dna return dna return means it is built in in your uh, genetic code so there is no but i think could not have this feeling some other day in their life they would be gripped and overtaken by this feeling that is nostalgia things that are the battles long ago that is the thing we are all happy when we think about uh, uh, battles long ago said quarrels and battles and uh, love affairs and uh, what not lot of things in our life when you come when you think you sit back in your armchair and think about it say after 55 60 that age or 60 70 or 70 80 80 90 and so on what are you will be thinking about it yeah some of these things will laugh some of these will cry some you will just at that time you know when you are at a particular stage you say oh it's like that or at times you think of the problems of god how god has uh, Uh, taken care of you through all these years and so on and so forth so this is actually and at the 12th the end of the poem it is very meditative and definitely it must have an impact on you i think that i already told you these things as they are so all right. do you think the contrast between nature and humans is uh, worth mentioning here when you consider this there's an open ended question so there is a few i think it, according to me i would say it's not very prominent here you can say but uh, i don't think it is as prominent as important as some people consider uh, there is a mention of this transient feet and uh, washing of the sea well, because both change both change nature also change and sea also and human souls also change nature also dies many of many things in nature are extinct now so that way It's not that prominent. That's what I think. That's your opinion. You can hold your opinion. Okay. That's lucky. Like Give a brief introduction about the author. Very good. So the author actually was um, she she uh, she was more interested in in uh, a, was a, as an editor and a teacher. She was known for uh, she 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 was an English poetess. and uh, along with that also she was she was an editor and also she was a create a teacher a, a teacher of creative writing for adults she edited uh, some famous books of important books of dickens 
Rudyard Kipling, Milton, John Milton, and Shakespeare. And she was more interested in uh, social history of British countryside, social and Celtic religion, Celtic Christianity. <coughs> you may know that uh, England was in her, <coughs> sorry, the original inhabitants of England, they were not uh, these uh, Germans, Germans means Anglo Saxons. They were the Celtic people, Celts. And these Celts, you know, they were living a very peaceful life. So at that time, it was in 450 AD, history is like that. 450 AD, Anglo Saxons and Jews from Germany came here. And they drove these people to the hilly areas, occupied the mainland. That is the history. So probably that's the way that she was very much interested in the British history, the social history of the British countryside and religion of Celtic Christianity. The religion of Celtic Christianity, how the Celts practiced Christianity. Her collection of poems, famous one, Shadows in an Orchard. Shadows in an Orchard. That came out in 1960. No doubt, this is one of the best poems of this poet. But she is not, we can say, like T.S. Eliot or uh, such, uh, such figures. There is no comparison with uh, uh, such poets and, uh, and uh, Shirley Tools. And very important English poet, she wrote this poem is about uh, one of the best poems. As I told you, there is a collection, Shadows in an Orchard wrote out in 1960, but more of that she was editor, then uh, she was uh, social history, industry and social history of the British countryside, not the city, but countryside. And uh, by God's grace, she had a very long period of life to live, 90 plus, we can say. So that may be the reason why she felt that bereavement of her mother is untimely death. One of the reasons may be that idea. Yes, so we, and when you say words were shelly and so on, not to that level, that's all. She was a great, she was also a very important English poet. So that's all. Well, I once again, you remember the shadows in an orchard. That is, orchard, or C H A R. that is 1960, so that's about, uh, that is about the author, what is the mood of the poem? The mood of the poem is, of course, nostalgia, bereavement, huh? bereavement and loss, nostalgia, bereavement and loss, then uh, resignation to fate. There is no the, this circumstance. It's si it, it's silence. The, the silence of these circumstances silences. That is. And I told you, silence, silences, I saw a little question. So these are the things that you know. What is the mood of the poem? The mood of the poem is nostalgia, gradually, bereavement, resignation, resigning to faith and uh, loss, and coming, uh, trying to get herself uh, a kind of compromise. You, know? you have to reach a kind of, a kind of irrevocable loss is there. Loss of your mother. But then you have to have some compromise. You have to compromise with that situation. And that is very beautifully expressed in the words labored is. Labored is. So it was very difficult for me. But you have to. Then that is. So there is ease can be a different type. You know? Ease can be a different type. See, for example, you win a match, you get the trophy. And uh, the moments that follow is <laughs> that you can say triumphant is triumphant is, but here it is labored is with great difficulty. But she has to accept the situation that is labored is. I think that if we can, uh, if you answer these questions, I think I'll give you a hint. Uh, you know, if I write answers here, then what will you do? You have nothing to do, isn't it? And also it's not a tough poem, also very simple. Combative. Isn't it? Combative. 
it's not a problem, I think. So I think these are questions that you can ask and then uh, you can remember. I would uh, second that, suggest that you read this poem at least 20 times and try to learn this poem. It automatically it will come. See, you wish. You can internalize this, not for exam, but you know, and the pressure of reading. Poetry reading is for pressure and also understanding experience life. Lots of experience are here. Bereavement, nostalgia, loss, compromising, accepting a situation, resigning, resigning to a stoic resignation to the uh, to fate. See? You are your helplessness, lots of things. Love for mother, love for uh, cousins, then uh, enjoyment, beach holiday. Uh, you have got the snapshot, uh, memories of two women, lots of things are there. And also uh, there is a, we can say, somewhat uh, a sprinkling of poetic devices, as we can see like a uh, metonymy, you have alliteration, you have oxymoron, you have uh, the reverence, you have dialogue, yes, there is contrast. These are all different poetic devices for attracting us towards this poem. Okay? So, by I think that you have understood, you have enjoyed uh, this poem, uh, my explanations. You like my exp explanations, my questions and answers. We can have simple questions again, plenty of uh, one word questions like this, you know. So, uh, one word questions like this, you can say, who were the, what were the names of the, uh, what were the cousins? Simple, <laughs> what were the names? Names of cousins, or who took the snapshot? Simple, again. Uh, what is, uh, why is it said that transient feet? Transient means uh, that is just passing, passing. Uh, both we can say it in a philosophical way or also in the say in the simple way. Transient, they were walking. <laughs> so they are moving, so the transient, we can say like that. So that is it. Then uh, what did uh, her mother say? Uh, taking the photograph. See Betty and Betty, how they are dressed up. These are all simple questions you can uh, answer. So I, I think then you can say how many persons uh, uh, memories of how many persons are in this poem? Uh, two persons, you know, the mother and daughter. How do you know that the mother, uh, ma mother, daughter had a great love for her mother? These are such simple, silly questions. Her sweet face, her laughter, her past. And how do you know that now she is bereaved with the circumstances? It's silence, silence. So these are plus questions you can ask, simple questions. Hope that you have enjoyed. Bye. Have a nice day. But remember this eh? for the time. Break the chain and crush. Bye.